Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are doing another video on um, bike tech. So today we are looking at Octane. What is it? What does it do? What do the numbers mean? And these Octane boosters that you might have seen in your local part supply shop and stuff. What the hell is it and what does it do? So, Octane, what is it? Well an Octane is actually a family of compounds which are hydrocarbon chains that look something like this. There are a few different ones, there's actually loads of different ones, but the ones mainly used in fuel mixes are uh, isooctane, heptane and pentane. And the isooctane is the trimethyl pentane. Yeah, just different strings of hydrocarbon compounds like this one. This one being octane itself because there's eight carbons. I'm not going to count them all. So what does it actually do? It's a fuel additive that is added to petrol, some are added to diesels, and it's an anti-knocking agent. So the first thing we need to understand is what the hell is knocking and why is this anti-knocking? So here I have two cylinders. So hatched out is your cylinder. This is your cylinder bore inside here, your volume. This is your piston and this is your piston, your other example. So let's just say that this void inside this cylinder is 100 cc. When the piston is at the top of its stroke, the volume inside the cylinder has decreased to 10 cc. Now, if we do a bit of maths, we cross off that zero, cross off that zero, we'll have 10 here, and then we have one here. So this is a compression ratio of 10 to 1. The fuel mixture is already in the piston with the petrol at this point. So you're not only compressing the air, you're compressing the a fuel mix, a charge. What happens is, is if you increase the compression ratio, your efficiency goes up. So engine designers are trying to get the highest compression ratio they can get. However, there is a stopping block. If you compress too much, too much heat is generated, which means that the petrol is going to auto-ignite. It's not going to wait for a spark plug, it's not going to wait for timing. It is just going to ignite. You've got your oxygen in here, you have your fuel, you have heat, that's a fire triangle, all finished off nicely. Ignition occurs, and this is called knock. So back in the day, to stop knock from occurring and to be able to use, if you can retard the knock, if you can stop knock happening, or if you can delay it so you can gain higher pressures, you gain higher efficiency. And engine designers quickly got onto this and they found a chemical, or actually an element, that they could add to fuel as an additive to retard the knock. This was lead, and that's why we used to have leaded petrol. Lead was purposely added to the fuel as an anti-knock agent, and a fucking brilliant anti-knock agent it was. Until we found out that it's killing all the pandas and seal pups and it's making kids go blind and stuff. It's just generally nasty stuff. So they stopped using lead in petrol so we started to get unleaded petrol safe for the environment and all that. So fuel and engine manufacturers wanted there must be another chemical compound we could use to retard um, the knocking, the pre-detonation of the fuel mix. Hence comes in octanes. Now without the octane additives your compression ratios instead of being generally 13 to 1 for motorcycles would have to come down. Your bike would knock all the time and because it's pre-ignition what can happen is, is the piston can be on its way on the upstroke and ignition occur forcing the piston or trying to force the piston back down the way it came and the thing that suffers in all this is the piston it blows a big fucking hole in the top of it. So it is very important that these octanes are added to fuel. So just before we get to the octane booster bit there's something that we need to understand and that's, this is called your swept volume, this is your compressed volume. This is controlled by two things. This is controlled by the distance from the top of the cylinder to the centre of the crankshaft. This distance is your cylinder top height, or your head deck height. Some of the combustion chamber is actually built into inside the head with nearly every single engine that I've ever seen. And this combustion chamber inside the head 
the volume in there also controls the compression ratio. How far the piston moves on its upstroke compared to how much volume there is left in here. Now if you want to, con if you want to change your compression ratio, what you have to do is you have to bring the combustion chamber closer to the crankshaft. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either cut some of the cylinder top off or you can shave back the head uh, just by doing a skim cut. By reducing this height here, what you are doing is you are starting off with the same volume but you are trying to squash this volume into a smaller space so the compression is higher. Which brings us full circle round to octane boosters that you can buy at most auto parts stores or bike get ups. Not so much the bikes but yeah, you get what I mean. So octane boosters. So octane boosters have octane, either um, iso octane, um, pentane and all the others has a mix in there, a blend of them and the bottles quote that you get 10% or 15% more horsepower and all this fucking rubbish octane boosters are anti-knocking agents you have to understand that that is what they are they are there to retard the knocking which means that if you add an anti-knock agent it means that you can go to higher compression ratios but that means that someone would have to take their engine apart deck their head you know, basically bring the combustion chamber close to the crankshaft, which you're not doing, you buy this stuff at fucking Alfred's, you're just pouring it in your fuel tank, and it just tells you just to pour it in your fuel tank and away you go. So you might see at your petrol pump there is a MON, or a RON, or an AKI number. Um, this is basically three different standards, so there's motor octane number, there's research octane number, and there's anti-knock index. These are used in different countries and these are just standards that have been put in place of how to compare um, just say pentane versus octane. It's just a way of having an index to compare one to the other and the fuel that you are buying will have one of these standards which means that this or this or this research facility or standard has been used to measure the octane that is in your fuel and it obviously passes them standards. So using octane boosters can actually be detrimental. Um, you're probably going to lose power. But the simple fact is, is these octane boosters, they are not a bottle full of octane or heptane or something like that. They've a mixture blend of octane and IPA and some cleaning agents just like um, Red X or something like that. These are just benign combustible chemicals that meet road standard emissions and like I say, unless you're going to skim your head there's just no point doing it, unless you are going to increase your compression ratio somehow, adding more octane to the octane that's already in the fuel that these manufacturers have put loads of fucking money and research into, trying to get the cheapest and most effective octane numbers they can get. If they could use lead they'd go straight back to it because lead was that good I remember there was a Rover back in the 80s that had a compression ratio of 17.5 to 1, which is fucking madness, that's into diesel territory. Any road, if you like the video please tick the thing, please comment if you've got any ideas for any other videos, for stuff like this you might not understand or stuff you want me to go through, um, please leave them in the comments, uh, go on to Facebook, you can just add me as a friend on there, it's for the channel, it's not my private Facebook ask me any questions there, please put them on my wall because if you put them on my wall then other people in the future will be able to see them if they have the same problem. Right, see you in a bit.